I'm going to talk about uh, the management of a renal cell cancer uh, with venous thrombus. So we know uh, up to 10 percent of patients with renal cell cancer may have uh, invasion of their venous system. Uh, it definitely makes surgery more complex uh, and increases the risk uh, for uh, morbidity and for perioperative mortality. The thrombus may be confined to the renal vein or it may extend into the IVC and up into the patient's uh, right heart. Sometimes the uh, thrombus is mobile, uh, which uh, makes uh, surgery a lot easier, and sometimes uh, it uh, invades into the actual wall of the IVC, uh, and patients may uh, require resection and grafting in this case. So when patients uh, present, uh, they usually come in with some constellation of uh, lower extremity edema, uh, right-sided uh, varicocele, uh, pulmonary embolus, uh, caput medusa, uh, sometimes protein in the urine, uh, cardiac or lung, lung systems if the uh, thrombus is higher level uh, or non-functioning renal units. A lot of patients, uh, surprisingly, have a few symptoms. Uh, this is a patient we, we saw just a little while ago, uh, and he had a, a higher level IVC thrombus, and his only uh, symptom was some dilated uh, superficial scrotal veins. So when we look at uh, surgery for patients with uh, venous thrombus, the first surgery was reported in the early 20th century, and the rationale at that time was if uh, you could do surgery in these patients who didn't have metastasis, uh, it could be curative. Uh, and this rationale remains today. We see 45 to 70 percent of patients without metastatic disease can be cured with surgery alone. Uh, and the second half is that in patients who have a IVC thrombus that extends into the hepatic or cardiac circulation, uh, patients may have hepatic or cardiac failure down the line, and surgery may prevent this. So imaging is very important in patients that you suspect a thrombus. A MRI or a high-quality uh, uh, CT scan is essential. We also use uh, transesophageal uh, echocardiography uh, at the time of surgery to monitor the uh, thrombus uh, height. There's several different systems which have been devised to classify tumor thrombus. Probably the, uh, the most widely used is the Mayo system, with uh, zero being in the renal vein and level four being above the diaphragm. So the principles for surgery for level or one for the low-level thrombus include early control of the renal artery, ligation of the lumbar veins, uh, placing clamps on the large veins draining into the IVC, uh, incising the IVC and removing the kidney and the thrombus on block. Patients with uh, thrombus above the hepatic veins may require a, a Pringle maneuver occluding the hepatic blood supply. Uh, we know when this is prolonged, patients may have hepatic uh, failure and uh, poor outcomes. And the highest level uh, IVC thrombus, these are the uh, thrombi that uh, invade into the right heart circulation, uh, may uh, require incising the pericardium from below uh, or uh, sternotomy and uh, cardiopulmonary bypass, uh, taking things out from above and below. Uh, we know this increased the patient's risk for bleeding, stroke, and cardiac dysfunction. So in the, in the remaining time this morning, I'm going to talk really just about uh, newer articles and newer themes in uh, patients with uh, venous thrombus. We know that some patients who have a venous thrombus present with pulmonary embolism. This is maybe 5 percent of patients. It's very difficult to, to tell whether or not this is tumor embolized from the uh, thrombus or whether or not this is a more global hypercoagulable state that we see in other uh, types of cancer. Uh, the thought is that maybe some of these patients have worse outcomes, the patients with pulmonary emboli, uh, and so surgery may have less benefit in these patients. Uh, and, and, and certainly this belief, uh, some patients with renal cell cancer and pulmonary emboli are not offered surgery up front. And I know our, our anesthesia team always reminds us that the 90-day mortality rates for patients, again, non-kidney cancer patients uh, who have acute pulmonary embolism is about 15 percent. So to answer these questions, we used a collaborative effort between uh, Wisconsin, UT Southwestern, and MD Anderson. We uh, looked at 782 patients who had venous thrombus who, were un who underwent surgery from uh, 2000 to 2011, and we identified 35 patients who had a pulmonary embolus diagnosed prior to surgery. And what we found is there was no difference in uh, perioperative uh, mortality. This is mortality out to 90 days. It was actually lower in the patients who had PE, even though they were more likely to have a higher level thrombus. And after we did multivariable analysis, there was no difference in cancer-specific survival for the patients, and there was no difference in recurrence-free survival uh, for the patients who did not have metastasis. Uh, this was very interesting. Even in the patients who had uh, PE preoperatively, they were no more likely to develop pulmonary metastasis. So just 
if the tumor is embolizing, just because it ends up in the pulmonary circulation does not mean it can grow in the circulation and uh, produce a metastasis. Again, you can see here the, there's no difference in cancer-specific survival or recurrence-free survival, and about 63% of the patients who did not have metastatic disease did not have disease recurrence after surgery. So neo, neoadjuvant targeted therapy to shrink the thrombus prior to uh, surgery is, is certainly a hot topic in the literature. Uh, there's a, a theoretical advantage uh, as you can do less invasive surgery in these patients. And there's certainly some dramatic responses uh, reported in the tumor thrombus. However, uh, when considering neoadjuvant therapy for these patients, uh, we need to know several things. How often does the uh, thrombus respond? And when it does respond, how often does that change the surgical approach? Are patients able to tolerate systemic therapy? Uh, we've seen this in adjuvant trials where patients without metastatic disease uh, tolerate this uh, systemic therapy uh, worse than patients with metastatic disease. And really, the, the ultimate question is, is the risk of surgery outweighed uh, by the risk of thrombus extension uh, causing hepatic or cardiac failure? <clears throat> Among the, um, uh, the case reports, there's uh, two, uh, two studies which are larger of 25 and 14 patients. And they found in, only in the minority of patients did the uh, thrombus actually th uh, shrink while in targeted therapy. Uh, few patients, less than 10%, uh, changed the surgical approach. And some patients actually did have an increase in the height of thrombus while on uh, targeted therapy. So for purposes of shrinking the thrombus, uh, the majority of patients with uh, IBC thrombus should not receive neoadjuvant therapy. Um, however, there may be some patients who would benefit from neoadjuvant therapy. Uh, and to identify these, really the theoretical benefit is best uh, in, in patients with the highest level thrombus because we can avoid cardiopulmonary bypass in these patients. When we look at patients with upper level IBC thrombus, we know this is rare, less than 1% of patients. Uh, it's the most technically complex uh, surgery uh, with renal cell cancer uh, with an increased risk for morbidity and early mortality. But what we really don't know is what are the risks. There's really a lack of high quality contemporary data in patients with upper level thrombus. If we look at just the series of morbidity and early death uh, with patients with upper level thrombus, you can see that many of these uh, studies span decades. They have low patient numbers overall. Uh, the way that complications or morbidity or mortality was defined is very variable. And just the rate of perioperative mortality is anywhere between 2 and 22%. So it's hard to know what to tell patients. So again, uh, going back to uh, collaborative data with this, uh, and this time we have a cl collaborative study between the Mayo Clinic, MD Anderson, UT Southwestern, and uh, University of Wisconsin. Um, we had 162 patients uh, consecutive using only contemporary patients um, from 2000 to 2012. We defined complications using the Clavian scale, and uh, death was recorded within 90 days. What we found is one in three patients had a major complication after surgery. Independent preoperative predictors of this were a level four thrombus or the presence of systemic symptoms being fatigue or weight loss. 10% of patients had mortality in 90 days. It was about 5% at 30 days and about 10% at 90 days. The preoperative predictors of this were ECOG performance status greater than one and albumin less than the lower limits of normal. Uh, both of these increased the, uh, the patient's risk about fourfold. And so these may be the patients that will be most suited for neoadjuvant clinical uh, trials. So in conclusion, uh, patients with venous extension increases the complexity of surgery. Uh, there's certainly a risk for morbidity or mortality. Uh, however, it may provide a durable cure in the majority of non-metastatic patients. Upfront surgery is certainly the standard of care for most patients with venous thrombus. Many patients who present with PE have similar outcomes to uh, patients with, without PE. And uh, neoadjuvant clinical trials uh, in renal cell cancer with thrombus should really consider patients individually for the theoretical benefit, which does not appear uh, to be high, uh, versus the risk individually for that patient, and focus on the patient with high-risk features, including thrombus above the diaphragm, systemic symptoms, poor performance status, or low serum albumin. Thank you.